Okay, where I had left off in the previous video, I uh, had just applied the junction rule to this uh, point over here, this junction over here, and we were about to apply the loop rule to loop A as I had assigned it. Okay, um, so the first thing is I said I often like to do is go to a battery first, but you can start anywhere in the loop you really want. Um, I decided to start here with this one and go in a clockwise direction. So I'm going from the negative terminal to the positive terminal. So the first term in my sum for the loop rule would be E1 with a positive sign. Okay. Um, when I get to the next thing in my loop, I would encounter this resistor, this unknown resistor R, that has the two amps going through it. I'm going in the opposite direction of the current, so I'm going against the current which means that I'm going to have a positive sign according to my sign conven conventions uh, and the voltage rise then would be equal to the I times R, V equals I times R, in this case 2 amps times my unknown R. I continue on my loop, the next thing I encounter is the other battery. This time I'm going from a positive terminal to a negative terminal, plus the minus gives me a minus sign for my uh, voltage according to my sign convention of E2. Continuing on in the loop, I find that I am back where I started and my loop is complete. The loop rule says that the sum of all of these terms uh, must add up to zero. And uh, right now there's not a whole lot I can do with that equation. Uh, there's three unknowns, so I need to move on to another loop and try and uh, ascertain some of these other unknowns. So I'm going to move on now to loop uh, B, and I'm going to apply the loop rule to B. And again, you can start anywhere in the loop that you like. I'm going to start again with the battery. Uh, going from the positive terminal to the negative terminal results in a minus sign in my sum of E1. Continuing on in my loop after the battery, I'm going to encounter the 3 ohm resistor going against the current will give me a uh, voltage rise of I times R. In this case, my I, I had already solved for as 8 amps. 8 amps times 3 ohms would give me 24 volts. Okay, continuing on in my loop, the next thing I encounter is a 6 ohm resistor on the outside, and 3 amps of current are going through it. I'm going against the current uh, again. 3, 3 amps times the 6 ohms will give me a positive, then 18 volts, according to my sign convention. And then I'm back to the battery again. So uh, according to the loop rule, this all must add to uh, zero. Now I'm in a better position to solve for something. Uh, there's only one unknown in this equation, and so I can pretty easily solve for that and determine that E1 should be equal to 42 volts. Okay, so I solved for two of my target variables. Okay. I'm going to move on to loop C and see if I can finish it up. Okay, so applying the loop rule to C, loop C. I'm going to start with the battery again. Again, you can start wherever you like. That's just what I always like to do. Uh, and I'm going clockwise in this loop as well, uh, which means that I'm going from the negative terminal to the positive terminal through the battery, uh, which means that I get a relative positive sign. So, you know, one way to think about this is like as if you're walking through these loops, right? And, and, and you're on a journey around. And on my journey around, negative to positive. Okay, continuing on, the next thing I encounter on the loop is the 6 ohm resistor. This time I'm going with the current, okay? Uh, so, this time that means a voltage drop, i.e. a minus sign in my sum of 5 amps times 6 ohms, which is 30 volts. Okay, continuing on the loop, the last thing I encounter in loop C is going to be the 3 ohm resistor. Again, multiplied by the current that I solved for earlier, which was uh, 8 amps. So uh, I'm going with the current again on this one, like I was with that one. So my 8 amps times my 3 ohms, and I need to remember my minus sign according to our sign conventions. And so that gives me uh, a minus 24 volts. Back to the battery. So I've completed my loop and my sum must equal zero. 
and similar to what I did with the second equation for loop B, I can easily solve now and find that um, the second EMF should be equal to 54 volts. Okay. And so all that leaves to, for us to find then is the resistor. But remember, I hadn't really done anything with this first equation that I had for loop A. So I'm going to utilize that equation now. I'm going to come down here and I'm going to plug in uh, all the things that I've already solved for. So plugging in uh, the first EMF was 42 volts. Um, and then to that I'm adding the 2 amps times my unknown um, resistance and then I'm subtracting off the 54 volts here for the second EMF. Okay, I've plugged in all the stuff I already know, which means I can pretty straightforwardly solve now for the resistor, and I'll leave that little bit of algebra to you. Uh, you, you, could, you can easily verify uh, that the resistance that you should find should be 6 ohms. Okay, and so now we've solved for uh, the resistance that we were looking for and both of the AMS and also the current going through the 3 ohm resistor. Okay, so I hope this illustrates exactly how you'd use the, the loop rule and the junction rule in conjunction uh, to solve for um, whatever it is you're asked to solve. The main thing to bear in mind is that you can um, choose you know, the direction of the unknown currents and things uh, to your liking and the signs, and, and as long as you follow the sign convention, that should work out. And for the loop rule, you can choose the loop uh, as you see fit and the directions as you see fit. And as long as you're obeying the sign convention, again, everything should work out. Um, and if you get a minus sign, like if I had gotten a minus eight here because I had had the arrow going the other way, then that would have just told me that you know the physical reality is that the, the current would be uh, heading up instead of down. Okay? Uh, we'll do some more examples of these, but hopefully this is a good one to start with.